$1.3 billion of Bitcoin changes hands in the first 30 minutes of today's spot ETF trading action. We also have a mysterious group setting up to lobby pro crypto just outside of Washington, D.C. And Ethereum is getting ready to take everybody's lunch. All this and more on today's blockchain basement. We are the bread and butter of all the information that's been swimming across the Internet for crypto news. If you're going to um, screw me, at least pull my hair. Yeah. Hell yeah. What do you got? Oh, 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 no. No. They could start chopping off fingers. They're yeah. like, give me your seed phrase. But That's, yeah. I don't know it. Over two years, he's made like 17K on Roblox. Yeah. What? Like 12. Yeah. You never listen to me, and we must be married. Yeah, well, how much are you investing? $100. Four to 600000 The think generational so signals are now. Do you now. Think you're spread so thin, that's how you get in on Snake. Snake's been okay. my biggest winner. Vibes. Welcome, welcome. Oh, shoot. This is the new set. This is what we're looking at. We're, we're, we're still a work in progress. We're designing. We're figuring out what we want to put up. I want to get something. Uh, this be, I feel like this is my Americana wall in the future. Maybe you know we'll what get I mean? send some like, stuff in for us to hang up or whatever. Yes. Some decorations. It feels like a late night talk show. We just yeah. need like a donkey and a fish hook and all is good. Yeah, I, mean, I can actually look at y'all now when I talk. It's um, definitely cozy. Looking cozy. Yes, yeah, Cindy Diesel saying it looks cozy. New layout. What's up, everybody out in the chat? Um, obviously, you're having some fun in crypto right now. If you uh, have been watching the big Basement, well positioned. Things have been looking very good, very green overall. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at a slew of different stories, but then a little bit of macro, a little bit of the chaos going on in Ecuador, uh, some potential problems for uh, the macro economy. But you know, I bring these things up because the whole vibe of where we are right now, we are in the new roaring 20s. We are in the technological revolution and we are going to have pain on one, one end and absolute explosion in value and use case on the other end. This is the transformation of humankind as we know it. It's all happening over the next 10 years. So if you're paying attention now, you're well positioned to experience that on the right end of the stick. But welcome everyone in the chat. Uh, we have Shake and Bake, Jamie Gonzalez, Crimson Caravan Company, Meanless with the Zoo Woos, DF... D I can't say the damn. I'm just gonna call you Dan. Uh, Dusto, Manawak, G Money, uh, Blue Punk Rocker, Matt, Randy Matthews, all the wonderful people, Fade and Tratfy. Um, but yeah, Hannah, you got a new spot. You know what I mean? This uh, this is is a very cozy kind of uh, environment. I feel like I'm talking to you guys. Hannah's got a little her bit shoes more. off and everything, yeah. man. Uh, yeah, in my shorts. Take my shoes off. Yeah. Excellent. You know what? Let's go ahead and kick these oh, shoes off. No. Oh, you let's make it. Thank let's God, just, BJ's not here. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, man, let's go yeah. ahead and take our pants. I'm no, like, no, no, it's, no, not, it's not that kind no, of stream. Not but that hey, kind of show. We got a lot to talk about today, though. Biggest, biggest day in the history of Bitcoin, we I would really argue. Do. Other than the Genesis block, yes, and you know what this means is, uh, I can't, I can't wait to dive. That's into why I stuff. pulled you aside this morning, Kelly. I was like, you know, we've done all of our expectation analysis and kind of what we're expecting to see out of the markets to give a reasonable bellwether to everyone that watches this channel to have reasonable expectations on what we're looking these assets to perform like. And now I'm having to recalculate that now that we have a spot Bitcoin ETF available in the United States. I showed you the capital value 
value of the United States compared to them, the Magnificent Seven, and then you have other competing countries. That's how much money is in the American market. That's why this spot Bitcoin ETF means so much. And so I came to you this morning, Kelly, you came into the studio and I was like, you know, um, you know, over the past, you know, year, maybe year and a half, I was thinking about the, the diminishing returns process that we'd seen over the past few cycles. And, you know, just trying to keep that in account in my expectations of this market. Really what I see coming up, like seven trillion dollars in general feels very obtainable right now, um, which makes me have to reanalyze kind of what I expect the top layer ones that are going to land in that top 10, you know, top 15 spot to be, you know, because we're used to very cheap uh, in relativity prices. Over the past year, we've seen some really insane cataclysms. And shout out to you out there watching this and being involved with crypto during these times. It's probably one of the most brutal bear markets I've ever seen. So um, good job on holding on to the ship as the barnacle of life um, that we all know ourselves to be. So crypto markets, you know, I have this really good gut feeling about Avalanche. I have this really good gut feeling about, um, you know, Chainlink and ICP. But, you know, Kelly, what is the project now that we're really seeing the potential of a strong blow off, you know, top and a real change that diminishing returns process? Do you have any projects that get you more excited than Bitcoin right now? Well, I look at them in two different camps. You know, I think uh, obviously they're all in the same crypto asset field, but I think of Bitcoin, it just separated itself from the pack if it wasn't already separated enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it separated itself from the pack because now it has the uh, government authorized institutional nod uh, with these Bitcoin spot ETF approvals, not one, not two, not seven, not 10, but 11, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so these are a lot of these uh, different fund managers, uh, Larry Fink is a great example of this, uh, has been uh, downcasting or cast casting aspersions on Bitcoin over the last you know seven years or so. Uh, and the cognitive dissonance and the, ignorant that, the ignorance that surrounds Bitcoin per perpetrated by the mainstream media over the, over the last five to eight years, yeah. that shi that's shifting. Not only is it shifting, Bitcoin is in the news on a daily basis now. So just like any product, doesn't matter if it's M and M Skittles or a financial product. When something's new, people have a resistance to it, right? Mm. Uh, and that that is even more so when you have the largest institutions in the world, uh, you know, banks uh, and politicians that are threatened by the loss of power. They have pushed this mainstream media narrative uh, to really highlight that uh, that sort of resistance to Bitcoin. But this is all now flipping on its head, and now banks and fund managers are getting involved with Bitcoin, which is going to be tipping the scales uh, for retail, the mom and pop, your grandma, fund managers uh, across the board. I think the capital flow that we're going to see over the next three years is going to be amazing. The one thing I will say about this, and we'll bring it up in a little bit when you bring up the charts, mm -hmm. is everybody that is highly speculatively bullishly biased in this immediate uh, time frame, like one hour, five hour, uh, you know, six hour daily candles, they're, they're wanting this to just explode immediately because of all this is happening. The truth is, there's some things, there's some data points that still need to play out to give people confidence for this to happen. And it also creates the perfect storm for institutions to take advantage of this speculative bullish bias and drop the price of the other direction. So I think over the next week, we might see a little bit of choppiness. I think we are going to work ourselves above uh, 50,000, but I'm still looking for a pullback in the near, near term, near term being before the having. Mm. But I'm bullish as I can be for 2024. I think we're going to go well above 80,000. I think we might even flirt with breaking 100,000 2024. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. In 2025, you said 7 trillion. Uh, you know, the 3.618 Fib extension is uh, is the level that marked the, this last cycle top around between 64 and 68 thousand dollars. Last cycle was truncated by the Chinese mining ban uh, it, in May or whatever it was of 2021. I think that that cycle would have gone further up and not yeah. just been you know cut short under 70. This cycle, I think, is the last cycle, but not only the last cycle, but the real opportunity cycle for us to actually have more gains than we had in the previous cycle. I think we can. I think we have an opportunity to break past the three point six one eight, and to give you an idea where that is, the three point six one eight is about two hundred and seven thousand dollars. Yeah. So, do I think we're going to sustain above that? No. If I had to say conservatively, I'd say minimum 150, 160, but more like the 180 to 220 range. And any any price point that goes beyond that 
happy hallelujah i'll be yeah. trying to figure out where i'm going to take some profits well everything you're saying it's it's a really nice encompassment like you know remember when larry fink said a flight to quality yeah um, there's a lot behind those words right that's the largest fund manager on earth saying that there's a flight to quality i made a post about this on instagram uh, last night but essentially these asset managers are realizing that those graphs that i showed you about turkey value to bitcoin argentinian value to bitcoin as far as their fiat currency is getting crushed bitcoin's already well beyond its previous all-time high in those currency denominations right well, he now he also said not only flight to quality mm -hmm. But he also said it's going to transcend all other currencies. Yes, exactly. And that's a big deal, right? That's I mean insane. Yes. In college they were they were foreshadowing one world government, one world currency, and, and the US dollar was losing dominance. Mm -hmm. And here we are two years later. It comes at you quick. You know it's, what I mean? Everything I was paranoid about three years ago is like happening. I know, but, but I'm not anymore. It's is fine. Drew Thirsty always. <laughs> I drink like three gallons of water. He's got to compete with Hannah with yeah. that stupid yeah. Stanley but, Cup. Han, Hannah and her Stanley. But what Hannah just said is, I think, interesting, and it ties directly to one of your your sort of pastime, your fash, uh, 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 passions yeah. with, with all those chickens and the eggs you got. Yeah. Now, have you seen Dr. Jeff Ross's page? He has a post that he did earlier today. That sounds familiar. Uh, Jeff he, Ross. He, he's a uh, he's a, a, a hedge fund manager. Okay, uh, and he's smart as hell. We've had I, I interviewed him for BitLab, but he has a chart on his page mm. that shows uh, the purchasing uh, the value of assets, U.S. dollar, and the value of Bitcoin as it relates to the cost of eggs. Right. Uh, and I can't remember the exact number. I'll have to pull it up. Uh, but the the U.S. dollar has lost purchasing power against, I think it's like 14% against eggs, whereas Bitcoin has gone up 99%. Yeah. So these silly sort of things might be fun, but this is the truth. We, we get so blinded by what dollar values are, we lose sight of the forest for the trees mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, why do we want capital? So we can buy goods, so we can buy services. Services so we can take care of our family. So right. it does matter what something is valued compared to something that we need in our life, right? Yep. Absolutely, man. And, you know, I, I'm just talking, I wanted to set the stage for being wary of larger economic issues going on while we are continuing to have an actual uh, bull market that we've never seen before. And someone asked in the chat if I think that this ETF approval does have the ability to change the four-year cycle. Um, I think so. I'm thinking that, you know, essentially we're going to see it rhyme, but much less of a, a correlation, like a, a slight rhyme is what I'm feeling like. And it, my gut feels is telling me that the front end of 2025 is going to be the best time for me to start scaling out um but yes i am having to you know kind of redesign my frame of thought there's going to be a lot of things going wrong in the macroeconomic side during this next few years and there's going to be uh, 10 reasons to sunday to get you out of the markets and make sure that you have enough money to buy toilet paper in case you get locked in your home once again um you know there is something that i'm watching out of the world economic forum this is from finance a lot they're slating a january 17th time frame for disease x um you know this is a something i've been watching because the emergency bank term funding program comes to an end uh a full conclusion in march and uh these bank injections have been going on there's a band-aid on a bullet wound going on and it's similar to the last time there was a uh an injection like this is 2020 so uh january of 2020 uh, same level of bank injections prior to a jeff bezos lab party um so i am watching these sorts of things going on in the macro just to acknowledge them with us here in the crypto realm because you're going to see a lot of uh fear porn about total economic collapse and if you are concerned about that like me it is a possibility not a probability but a possibility then you know the more probable thing is they just kick the can down the road and just continue the ponzi for at least another 50 years you know what i agree with that but what i'm really interested in mm -hmm is what where bitcoin stands in the just the general populace broadly uh in terms of how, how the dynamic shifts uh and when it's going to shift from being a risk asset yeah. to a flight to safety i have a great right? graph for this Perfect. let's pull this up so the public literally i mean this is from thomas uh thomas underscore far higher far uh public has no idea what's happening bitcoin and this is the search uh trends on google this is how many this is how many you know searches are happening on google for bitcoin right now we are still well it's in the pretty low rooms. very low i used to know on google trends all the time yep. bitcoin, bitcoin ranks very low i think crypto ranks higher 
Yeah. But yeah, barely. Barely. Um, so, you know, that's just some context on where we are in the markets. Like you see that huge peak. Uh, this is when, you know, everyone was, you know, curious at least about Bitcoin. Many people got in at the top. Make sure you're not one of those people that's getting in at the top. Um, you know, at the time of, you know, probably Q1, Q2 of 2025, I am going to be airing a great amount of caution and ensuring heavy profit taking within at least myself. Uh, but I'll do that on a public platform. So we'll see if anyone listens. Um, you know, what I mean, uh, I'm but, sure the search term will go up as yeah. the price goes up. But, so. but also with that caveat, I know Drew. I know Drew well, and even though he's saying that, I know one of the things he's going to be doing when that once that Q when, uh, Q1 comes is every day. Every time you look at the chart, you reinform your analysis. You reinform and you adapt to the new structures Absolutely. that you're seeing. So there might be a cause to say, hey, this looks so bullish. Maybe I'm not going to reduce as much as I wanted. Maybe you reduce more than you wanted. You need to remain flexible to what the chart is telling you and what's going on in the broader narrative mm -hmm. uh, so that you can stay in profit in, in, to, the, to the max ability uh, for your portf uh, portfolio. Well, and for me, that, that time frame is easy to know because I have those specific goals. You know what I mean? Having very specified goals on what I want to accomplish out of this, um, you know, is very important for me to know when to take those profits. Last cycle, I wanted a car outright. I wanted a few things outright to myself without taking more debt on. So I was, I, I didn't liquidate everything, but then I sold most of my ETH because of those goals right around like 45 or 4,800, you know, and I thought I was the biggest idiot in the world. 45, 40, 4,800, 40, 40, 40, 4,800 per Ethereum. Oh, the last Ethereum, uh, bull yeah. market. Side. And okay. you know what? Tell me this, everybody out there, I want you to engage with the chat right now. Answer this. If you've ever sold, tell me it's some reason, even when you're up. It is the, it's harder to sell than make your first purchase. Yeah. 100%. And, you, and you feel, so you're like, oh my 100%. God. And then it picks up another 3% and you're like, should I get back in? Uh, and then you see yeah. the market drops a week after or two weeks after, maybe you miss out five or 8%. But after that, in hindsight, you're like, oh, my God, thank God I sold. But for some reason, it is so it is. hard. And this isn't just crypto. This is a good analogy on life. It's so hard to treat ourselves like we treat our guests. Mm. Treat yourself well. Take profits so that you can treat others well. Yeah, this this cycle might get really weird uh, as far as, you know, comparing it to four-year cycles, it's too, so and timing it out. Look at this chart from uh, I can in ice very bags, easily. <laughs> uh, ice bags underscore here. Talk, and this is just a clean comparison to the Bitcoin price action compared to uh, gold when it had its ETF introduced. And we've cited this before. Um, you oh, know, it's and there bullish. Is a lot, yeah, it's an insanely bullish graph. Good but it, gosh. You know, it lengthened, so now it's kind of mirroring this just on a larger scale, gold is. Um, you know, Bitcoin... If it's accessible by these largest fund managers during an economic collapse, that's just more fuel to the fire for them to find that flight to quality. That's why those words keep ringing in my head. And, uh, you know, I did see BlackRock backing off the ESG initiatives once uh, 22 state attorney generals came after them for not only their economy being hit by them during the high inflation levels, but then uh, a large majority of these states that push back against the ESG initiative and BlackRock there within uh, have a heavy industry uh, reliance on energy, right? They're part of that energy sector, and that really destroys state GDPs if you're just overhauling it because of some, you know, 17-year-old kid saying, how dare you, you know? Then there's major problems. They get felt over a few years. They realize their books have gone very red. Um, so I think that proof of work is going to be preferable. Proof of stake won't have any uh, any missed opportunity in this, though. There is something we are uh, we are watching that's also coming around the bend. It looks like, I mean, first of all, we have this Ethereum just put in a uh, three day EME, EMA cross. Only other times it had this same lineup was uh, 2017, where it went up 2,800 percent. 2020, when it was 2,100 percent. So, you know, I am feeling very good about ETH's uh, positioning price-wise right now. Um, and with that, like, we saw it earlier in the week, uh, you know, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, you had ETH really hitting it, and then the next day you had Pendle. Uh, we were talking about Pendle. I think Pendle and that the rest of those are doing amazing right now. Let's see where Pendle's price action is. Um, let's see here. Yeah, up 18% on the day. Uh, pretty well up on the week there, so... This is another one, you know, I, I know we were talking about uh, near foundation yesterday as 
The graph on near Did looks you buy really it? good. I didn't buy. I saw you said you were. I know, but I saw <gasps> this. Look, uh, near foundation cut staff by forty percent, saying treasury remains strong. Ooh. We're still having to cut a lot of a lot of people while the prices are starting to pick up. The rest of the market's starting to pick up. You know, it's kind of concerning. You know what I mean? Because it's a, a thought in my mind is like a company in crypto um, just needs to keep the lights on, the activity going. While the bear market and the doldrums are happening, building and you know trying to build new things, and we are right on the edge of the bull market. So like you know, companies should be starting to see a little bit of green. Well, right. You know, it, it could like, be it could be a couple of things that are all a little bit cautionary. It could be something like uh, the the money flows and profitability of whatever their business model isn't hitting. But it mm -hmm. could also be something as simple, and this is why it's important to look at the team because it could be having inner conflict or something where they're having to scale back because of something that it's they're forecasting something coming coming that we don't know about yet that is yeah. likely going to cause uh, a drawback in their profitability. I mean, it's, so. it's still a potential for me. I haven't written it off. I mean, the graph still looks decent, you know, and it didn't do bad over the day. It was up at 10% or, you know, so it hasn't ran away yet. A lot of people, you know, I know in the chat we're bringing up, they stacked this thing at around a dollar. Very good move. If you did buy that dollar spot, that's 98 cents at the very what's doldrums What's the total supply on, on near? Uh, what's let's the, see what's here. the current supply? Uh, current supply circulating is 1 billion and total supply is 1 billion. So, um, you know, it should mm. be, you know, the supply looks like it's fully out. It doesn't have the max supply listed because it's just total and circulating. Uh, but the fully diluted market cap is sitting exactly there, uh, 3.6 bill, uh, same as the market cap listed here. Let's look at the flash view here. I, like I have an this. interesting question. What's that? I, I don't know what how much money I want to say here, but say you make a hundred k mm -hmm. in this bull run, how much are you taking out for other investments, car, paint, whatever, and then how much are you putting back into investments in crypto? Man, that's a. I mean, here's my goal. People in the chat, let us know too. Yeah, what are you guys gonna do? This in the was chat? a shower thought I had. I was like, how it's much? <laughs> I was just thinking, shower. I was like, how much am I gonna take out and like? put into my house or mm -hmm. pay off the rest of my truck or whatever. And then mm -hmm. how much am I going to put it back into crypto? I don't know. Yeah. What do y'all think? I mean, my goal personally is to pull out 500 and then get a new home, you know, have the home that I have right now and then pull out another 500 and pay for that uh, with the crypto to have okay. that house to live in. So that's my goal. Um, Hannah, what, what would be a re what do you, what are your targets here? What would you want to accomplish in the next bull market? Yeah. I said a down payment on a house for sure. That's my number one goal. Not that I want to buy right at this moment, but I definitely want some property. Okay. Land okay. As well. Where at? Is it going to be city center stuff? Or are you going cheap woods? Where is it at? Me and Aaron are in the cheap woods. I want like in the middle, I think. Okay. In okay. the middle. Suburbs. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Uh, I don't know. Kelly, Kelly, what do you think? Goal? Oh, the goal. I mean... I have a hard time as an analyst thinking about this because I want to look historically at the trends of, of the Bitcoin bull market cycle, market cycle in general, on the four-year cycle. This tailors back to the other question somebody had. Do we still have a four-year cycle? Mm -hmm. Because now that we have the ETFs involved, there's going to be, uh, you know, the flood of capital in is going to drive, I think, an incredible bull market. The question is going to be, as more and more institution, uh, institutional players come in, smart monies come in, fund managers, come, uh, indexes, all these different things get involved. They're also going to be hedging their positions, which is actually going to start to diminish uh, at a quicker rate the volatility in the market. Now, the question is going to be, do we get a blow off top again yeah. or do we get some sort of rounding top that, like we see still larger volatility than we see in the stock market? But more of like instead of a 70 to 80 percent pullback in the in the bear market, do we only get 60 percent? Do we only get 40 percent? Like what what is this going to look like? So for for me, I am going to move all of my alts into Bitcoin okay. for uh, and from there determine how much I want to. And again, this is this is going to be shaped. I would say I would probably I'm probably going to leave about 35, 30 to 35 percent long term hold that I don't touch whatsoever. Mm. And then as as the market drops and we have a whole course on this in BitLab Academy, as the market drops, uh, there's uh, uh, several different signals that I utilize looking at on chain data and what the different relationships of long term holders and short term holders are. Uh, and now I'm sure we're going to get new data points to look at with the ETF flows yeah. uh, that we can add to our tool bag uh, to figure out when we want to start scaling back in. But uh, th that's I would 
would say, yeah, a, a reduction of about 70% out okay. of the market. Okay. And then I'll scale back in very aggressively where I think a bottom is going to be. TJ Shed is in the chat, I see. Hey! TJ, what? what's up? Hey, you know what? With the reshuffling, we don't have TJ on the desk anymore. I know. I know. We He's probably like, what is the setup? We also, uh, I saw a funny comment. Crypto Stevo says 80% cash, 15% crypto, 5% for Hannah's ring? What What's good with oh that? Yo, what's up? That's a ooh woo right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> put some put some hearts in the chat for TJ though. Hey, just so you know, she only takes precious metals. So. Mm. Oh my gosh. I, yeah. uh, I don't want no lab diamonds. You know, we brought up lab diamonds yesterday. Oh, she's one of those girls. <laughs> yeah, she went the real one. Okay. Oh lord. Uh, you brought up short term holders, man. I I have this graph on short term holders. I actually, transferred two billion dollars uh, worth uh, two exchanges. It was the fourth largest movement in two years. Uh, you know, uh, pretty recently here. So, you know, Kelly, we are seeing the short term holders kind of taking their their bags, you know, a little bit of good gains over a short amount of time, sending it to the exchange, experiencing a little bit of uh, profits, you know, no, sh no shame in doing that, no harm. Well, we're also um, at, we're also at the same levels of profitability in the market right now that we were uh in the 2019 run up from 3500 up to 14000 yeah. uh the number the percentage of people in the market that were in profit we're basically hitting that sort of metric right now so the struggle every analyst is having right now when we're looking at the chart is we have a fundamental change to the ecosystem and yeah. that is the bitcoin spot ETFs that are buying and today here's the thing everybody needs to realize we're seeing huge flows into those ETFs now what we need to see is what's the response overnight it's really through the end of this week of what's the buying pressure going to do to the actual market? How much of that's going to be bought over the counter? But then also is the over the counter uh, places that these uh, these ETFs are buying from if when they if and when they are, how quick is that is that pool going to be exhausted? Yeah, because that will cause a true supply shock on the exchange. Yeah. So. Us being on a chart level, we're right at the forty-eight. Uh, sorry, we're right at the forty-eight thousand mark where we just rejected off twice over the last three days. Right, forty-eight thousand marks to golden pocket from the macro move from the previous all-time high to the market low. So we already knew that forty-eight thousand dollars was a stopping point. In fact, I I drew a chart, shared this chart January of last year of where I thought we might find a little reversal. Mm -hmm. This is before we knew about the ETS, before all that on a technical level. So not not only do we have record levels of uh, huge levels of of profitability we're at a technical level of a, po a potential reversal and there's a lot of uncertainty about what this etf is going to bring in terms of the supply shock to the market so oh, yeah. there's two things that can happen there's three things that can happen here you know up down sideways but in this case i think we're not really going to get the sideways i think we're either going to get a stiff rejection that's going to be a washout that takes us down to that, that cme gap 39.6 which I i'd be happy to buy there or we're just going to ignore this golden pocket and break up into the mid to upper 50s and sh start a different type of market cycle that we're going to be looking back to uh, for relevance in the next cycle right. so because we're creating <laughs> right. we're kind of an unfounded territory right now. Things so change. I just say be safe yeah. right now. Nothing's um, guaranteed. It's really good to caution. And, and I really am feeling that way in my stomach. Like things are changing as far as, you know, our past bellwethers and our compasses on how we would find out the good rhythm of the market. Um, I don't think it's changing in a bad way. It's changing in a really cataclysmically good way for us here in crypto if you're in early. And also, I don't discount the potential for at least a application and strong uh, conversation starting in 2024 this year about an Ethereum ETF. I and, agree. You know what I mean? Like Gary Gensler came out. He said Ethereum and Bitcoin, not not securities. He's already said that in the past. Mm. He tried to walk back his words a little bit on the Ethereum side, um, trying to leave that. You know, I said that, but I'm leaving it for the rest to discuss and everything like that. And to be fair, like Gary was the deciding vote. Uh, you know, there was two for, two against on the commissioner board. He is the fifth vote that put you know Bitcoin what? into play. I bet he wanted to vote against it, and he realized as a deciding vote, he's like, he, he was also voting on whether or not he wanted to keep his job. He's like, well, I got to do this if I want to keep my job. I mean, he's got a good job. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's got a really good job. But to that point, every single one of you that's in chat right now, hit the like button and subscribe <laughs> Blockchain Basement because you are here, you're interested in crypto, and you are involved in this ecosystem before the institutions got here. You can say this from this point on, nobody else can say that when they come into this market. You 
you caught that you caught that move before yeah. it happened. So let's be patient with what's going to happen. You're already here. Market's going to be going up over. Join time. us, the yes. basement dwellers. Smart. We got time before the Ethereum ETF news really, really uh, makes us bleed from our ears because it's everything we talk about every day. We're like we got over the hump. Bitcoin is approved. Ethereum ETF, watch out for that approval. And if it's going to happen, it's going to be somewhere around August of 2024. So I am going to be watching for that. Um, you know, I'll try to run through everything else. A lot of things to cover here. And the markets are very exciting today. But I'll back up, go through all the news. We got platforms where the ETFs are available. Is Fidelity and Charles Schwab. Platforms where you cannot purchase these is Vanguard, Citigroup, Merrill Lynch, Edward Jones, and UBS. Um, you know, I am... Charles Schwab, I've heard conflicting reports about this. According to uh, Bitcoin News, it looks like they are going to be allowing access to it. I don't see any way around it for Charles Schwab. They are on a chopping block right now as far as their uh, their valuations. They are more insolvent than solvent at the moment being. By about, they're, they owe 130% for how much they take in every year. But right you know now. what? You know, Even the, this list below, the yeah. uh, uh, platforms uh, platforms that you can reportedly not purchase yet. Yeah. My question here, and this can only be told with time, we're going to have to wait to see how this develops. The future is Bitcoin. And if you if people are going to either have exposure and be part of the future or not and get left behind, mm -hmm. we're going to be a shift. We're going to see a massive shifting and reshuffling of class structures. And I don't like to use the word class, but let's talk about this in the socioeconomic class. I mean, where you fit in your tax bracket, you know, where you're at socioeconomically. Uh, and the same thing is true for institutions uh, going into the future. Uh, those participate in this now are going to have a very active part uh, in not only being in, but shaping the future, right? right? And I think that this is such a big thing that I'm curious to see, and this is where the time comes in, how many of these are absolutely resisting it because they're completely hands-off, they, they, they don't agree with it, they don't believe in it, and how many of these are not allowing, uh, you know, or, or they're blocking access to the ETFs because they have uh, some sort of Bitcoin facing financial products or tools that they're currently working on? Yeah. Mm. I mean, the latter That's of those true. two things you're asking about, that's something we need to look into a little bit more. I can answer off the cuff. I know that UBS is definitely uh, closely connected to the Swiss government. It's one UPS? of the most. Uh, UBS? No, yeah. Um, they absorbed, uh, what was it? What is it? it was Credit Suisse. They absorbed Credit Suisse. Yeah. Uh, by uh, order of the Swiss government in 2023 during the banking collapse. So, you know, UBS probably going to be intrinsically opposed to this to probably the last second. Um, in general, if you're sitting in a governmental seat, your job is to keep control of the people. Bitcoin takes your monetary control away. So, you know, until you absolutely need it and your system is looking for some kind of relief from its uh, guaranteed systemic collapse, then you will not acknowledge it until the final second. That's kind of can what you, I feel like. Can you imagine yeah. if the adoption rate of Bitcoin goes in such a way that, and this I think is going to happen, governments are going to start having to add Bitcoin to their treasury, right? Yeah. And can you imagine, this is just a bizarre thought here, and a situation where there's some sort of economic trouble going on and the stimulus is no longer printing money, but they need to buy Bitcoin to buoy the price. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what I hope for. That's, and then you get the finite nature of Bitcoin instilling that monetary responsibility by force. That's the process that we're hoping Bitcoin can have. Um, again, and we, we've talked about the dangers of BlackRock and its trillions of dollars taking control of this system. That's why we need to continue working on building other decentralized platforms to transact on. Transactions are a form of speech. You have the right to transact in speech, uh, in my opinion. So, you know, we should do everything we can to continue development within the crypto and blockchain space to just make sure that that never goes anywhere. So, on the other side of things, Franklin Templeton going absolute 1776 monetary style with uh, Benjamin Franklin and laser eyes is their actual profile picture. This is a uh, one, I think they oversee $1.4 trillion. And there's such a legacy financial institution. Right. They, I mean, the, the people that are involved with Franklin, Tem uh, Franklin Templeton, plus the, the duration for which this organization has been around. It's, it's mm -hmm. just markedly amazing yes. that they're so on board with the Bitcoin train. And it sparks joy. They're using the founding fathers. Like, I think I made a video. It was actually my first uh, pre-recorded video I released on the basement is why the founding it. fathers were Bitcoin maxis. You yep. know what I mean? You remember that one? It was a, yep. a great video. And there's a lot of similarities between 
the requests of our founding fathers that helped form the Constitution and what we know as America today, and the operation and ethos of Bitcoin. And I do feel very strongly that they would be for a transparent, immutable system of transactions. Um, so I keep bringing it up because it matters to me. I know it's uh, you know old school Americana, but I'm not going to let it go. I don't care if I'm irrelevant in 20 years. And everyone around me is a pink-haired foo foo. Um, <laughs> let's see here. So we got this. We got the ETF. Uh, this is the Grayscale trade is dead from Ryan Selkis. It's just showing the discount is gone on Grayscale's purchase. Uh, you yeah, know. I, I talked about this on the Did you? stream this morning. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? This is interesting because there's a couple narratives that this shapes. One is that there's people that were getting involved with GBTC that wanted some sort of Bitcoin facing exposure, but they did not want to be actively involved in the Bitcoin market and yeah. on the crypto side of it. Uh, on the other side of it, uh, or in addition to that, you also have people that were buying this because there was a negative premium. So in the at the bottom there, there was a negative premium of about, I think it was minus 43% or it did. minus, minus yeah. 47%. Meaning, and you're talking this Meaning levels. you got nearly double the amount of Bitcoin exposure than what you're putting in to get. And so now that this premium has come back to equilibrium, back to zero, there's a couple different things that this means. One, there's some people that were in this just for the negative premium arbitrage, where now they're, they're, they'll get out because now we're back to zero. They made their money not only in Bitcoin going up, but also in this premium coming back to zero. So now they get to realize the gains on that premium shrinking. In addition to that, you also have the GBTC trust rolling into an ETF. Right. So there's some people that have exposure within this. Now they're also saying, well, and this isn't going to be a, it's not going to be like 50%. There's going to be some metric that we'll see over, develop over the next month or so. That people that are in it on, on the on the exposure side may be flowing from GBTC into, for instance, Bitwise or BlackRock or something else on the uh, on the condition that the GBTC uh, ETF has the highest uh, management fees, one point five percent, whereas Bitwise is 02 percent. So not only that, there, there's several different narratives here that I think we're gonna. It's gonna be interesting to see what the flows are in the in the grayscale. Uh, trust uh, grayscale ETF because of that. I love it. I love it. And then just to show these graphs again, just real similarly, because I was thinking about this on uh, the morning show when I was running the board with DZ. So we're talking about the grayscale uh, trust discounts at around 43% right here at the doldrums, but also lined up right with the nutsack pattern that we saw at 15K, 16K on Bitcoin Would over a year ago. A nutsack sack? pattern. Yeah. That's. <laughs> that, I learned know, something new today in TA. Yeah. You know. um, so this is the uh, yeah the nut stack pattern where the right, right testicle is a little a little lower, lower. Yeah. a little lower which means you have some bullish divergence on the sack. <laughs> 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 All right, that's the way she goes. You I know? learned um, something new today. <laughs> but there's a few different metrics that we're using. Like obviously, DZ was talking specifically about the time frames between each different bear market and bull market top and bottom, and you know we had that as a really strong uh, kind of compass leading us to believe that when we were at 15 to seventeen thousand dollars, that was the few months at the bottom of the market but then also we had down here in the basement we looked more uh a little bit beyond that into the actual electricity cost and how much it cost to mine a bitcoin on average in the united states at the time it was fifteen thousand dollars per bitcoin for sale but it cost nineteen and a half thousand dollars to produce that showed a big discrepancy. We saw that there was a great, great buying opportunity. And you can use multiple indicators macroeconomically and, you know, TA, weather guy, whatever you want to call it, uh, with the lines and the support stuff. But a lot of this lines and support stuff, I really agree with British HODL's uh, take this morning on the morning show. Uh, they're going to mean a little bit less. You got to compound other sorts of macroeconomic reasons behind your decisions uh, when you're making different ideas. Um <laughs> Was no, not. <laughs> the hell? Let's move what? on to the next topic. Oh no! What happened? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, oh no. Bitcoin. Let's look at oh. that chart. Oh no! Oh, the dead wood. Are you talking about Cody? <laughs> the dead. He did wood. make a video recently about some micro cap AI picks. Oh he's yeah. He's been talking about Banky. He's been talking about. Uh, there's been a couple. Binky. Yeah. Um. I think there's a. You go check. A, we got to share a link to Discover Crypto. Daisy's dropping like yeah. Tons there was of like a five micro cap video we put okay. out last weekend. Uh, yeah, you can't miss it. Daisy's working like a, a madman. Uh, he he is uh, one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. Yeah, I mean, dude, like we'll we'll do these morning meetings where we're talking about what we're working on and what we did yesterday. It's incredible. And everybody says about three things, and Daisy talks for fifteen minutes while yeah. I filmed this video. I wrote this script. I did the. He yeah. is. 
killing it. And he's doing, you know what? DZ has done a great job in how much he's had to adapt over the last oh, six months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't be happier for him. And the, like, he's doing a great job. Yeah. Killing it. Absolutely. Over here. And, and also. Owen's muck banging. Hold on, Kelly. Owen is muck banging right that now. Was good too. Oh, put the my camera. God. Show him. And what is it? It's, I'm not going to tell him what it is. What is he doing? What he's muck banging right now, doing? live. All right. Yeah. You should I'll guess. What do you think muck banging yeah, is, Kelly? You're going to take a sushi roll to the throat or what? Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> what oh, he no. He gave it up. He already gave it up. Kelly just gave you up, Owen. You're, you're exposed. Oh. Well, um, mug bang is just when you eat like a lot of food or yeah. like you order the entire McDonald's menu and like you eat it and he stuff. He eats often. You don't eat all of it. Just, yeah. It happens, Kelly. Okay. My waistline, don't look so concerned. My waistline suggests that I should know that word uh, in, in authority because <laughs> yeah. clearly muck bang regularly. Dude, we have like, <laughs> oh. the, uh, right after the show, I'm going to be jumping into another workout. Ooh. Uh, there it is. Dang. <laughs> I, I love working out um, after yep. the show. It My legs are good. sore, bro. I know. I can't. I can barely walk around. Whatever the heck that thing was, we did. Um, I did mention at the start of the show. Okay, you guys. Just an, though. What's Texas got? did raise DZ. I'm also from Texas. Yeah. Texas is the spot. You're from Texas. What part? I am. Yeah, I was born in San Antonio, raised in Houston. Okay. Real estate in Texas would be nice. Yeah. yeah? Okay. I uh, I went to Austin a few times. I met. Alex Jones one time, and then I met Charles Hoskins in the only other time What's I've been to Texas. What's interesting about Texas is it can, it can be absolutely the reddest state you've ever been in and also absolutely the bluest state, depending on what area you're like. For instance, if you're downtown Atlanta, you're like, this is the most liberal spot ever. You go an hour outside of, sorry, not Atlanta, Austin. Uh, if you go an hour outside of Austin, then it's no. like, it's like it, it's just so different. And it has every everything that you can want from trees to rivers to mountains to grasslands but then also super de- democrats and super republicans it's a pretty interesting mix match i love the mexican and by food the way, down there tex-mex is the only yes. way to go yes 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 papacitos is my jam got to got to texas been... has some good food we went yeah. to that one place when we met Hoskinson. every place i went was so good yeah, it was did you really go to terry good. blacks when you're in austin um, we went to the steakhouse. No, it's a it's a barbecue, barbecue place. Spot. Killer, and you know yeah. it's it's uh, it, it shocks you because you get some barbecue, and I've had barbecue all over the place. And I'm like, oh, this is probably gonna be a thirty dollar plate, and they're like, that'll be ninety seven dollars. You're like, mm. did you Ooh. double ring? Bro, the but brisket it, melts in your so mouth. Good, <laughs> everything in Texas in was good. <laughs> Put that juice and in bigger, like they said. Yeah. Yeah. Give it to Daddy. Oh, Atlanta my God. food is mid everywhere. Mid. Oh my God! Well, there's guys, some good spots that I'm starting to find. I'll Keith say. Lee, Keith Lee on TikTok. Right, let us know in the chat. What's your favorite food? Where is it from? Are you a Tex-Mex Maxi? You know, I miss green chili out of Colorado. I'll say that much. I miss Texas? green chili. Well, I lived in New Mexico. Everybody wanted to add green chili to everything. I'm like, stop ruining my dishes. Oh my God, that's terrible. Texas I love is green good, chili. Um, no. High school football. High school football. <laughs> We do queso oh good here. I like queso. Yeah, in case it's bomb. Um, all right, so I mentioned this. I got to cover this a little bit. Mysterious crypto track. lobbying <laughs> group is setting up near Washington, D.C. as the U.S. elections approach. Um, I do mention the elections because they are going to be a macroeconomic pain in the side for a moment's time. Um, crypto lobbying group with little publicly available info is gearing up to advocate for digital assets ahead of the U.S. election. Uh, CNBC reports that a mysterious nonprofit, they're being mysterious. Hamas, maybe terrorists. They're in crypto. Elizabeth Warren told me so. A uh, nonprofit called the Cedar Innovation Foundation was incorporated in Delaware in April. A group's website and account on the social media platform offer no identifying information about its backers or employees, but CNBC citing people familiar with the matter say that top U.S. crypto exchange Coinbase will likely donate to the nonprofit by the end of 2024. And we all know Coinbase just locked up uh, 10 out of the 13 ETFs as far as being the custodian for them. So they're going to be custodying the largest asset managers on the planet uh, in a very centralized manner. Coinbase is going to be taking over. We were wondering about all those shots against Binance. Remember me and Hannah, I was talking to Hannah every day. We felt like we had like a Binance hit piece that came out in the mainstream media. And they were going after CZ. Then the DOJ, you know, comes after CZ recently. It just feels like it was this large... Propping a little bit. Yeah, it was a propping. It was like an orchestrated push to essentially try to get Binance dethroned. I do believe Binance still sits as the top exchange on the planet. Um, That's only because just as of now, now American capital is regulatorily allowed to fully access Bitcoin at the least 
So, and that's through Coinbase, right? That's Not crazy. through Binance. It's crazy. Actually, that happened the timeline quick. of events when when CZ stepped down was like not too long ago, like right. a month, a month and a half. Right. And Forgot now about that. the ETFs have been approved and they're being custodied by exactly. Coinbase. Yeah. Mm. That's, uh, is it all eleven of them or seven out of the eleven? It's, uh, it's, it's a, a lot. It's, I think it's, it's the 10 majority. Out of seven eleven. It's, it's the seven majority 11. of the. So this is one of those things. Even regardless of what you've seen on the price action for Coinbase over the last, you know, since they IPO'd. We have to realize that they're they're going to be uh, the custodian doing custody for all these ETFs, in addition to doing a, 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 I'm sure major OTC deals, uh, in addition to onboarding new people as they come in, I, I, and they're also expanding their uh, trading both spots and derivatives globally. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I mean, it, it's something to really pay attention to if you have any money in the traditional finance sector. Uh, it might be something that you want to add to a, a position. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not financial advice. That strategy to make some money <laughs> advice, baby. Um, we have more global kind of regulatory stuff I'll touch on. Um, yeah, you might want to, we got to open up his gate maybe. We, I, I want to set up the mic so they really capture people nicely. You know what I mean? It's still, the set's still work in progress. Oh, we, yeah, they were worried about Big your work mic. in progress. Um, open up my gate like this? Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> South Korea reiterates a ban on crypto ETFs. Uh, so South Korea, you know, much, much smaller capital market than the United States. Obviously not too concerned about this, stopping up the insane bull market to come. But, but we but do this, see this, some This pushback. is bizarre, though. What's that? Because South Korea, I remember about two two years back or something, they were they were at one point the most uh, crypto active uh, country, um, and they have a huge. I mean, I'm talking a, a disproportionately large number of people uh, of their population that are involved in crypto in some in some capacity comparatively with other uh with other countries so it's interesting that they would be resistant to the 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 etf stuff mm -hmm. unless they're trying to limit money unless I, and i haven't read this article unless it's a, an attempt to limit money leaving uh korea and going into u.s securities well, I mean, if you open up uh, access for crypto, like I feel like there is a lot less uh, freedoms within uh, South Korea than the United States, and that you know I don't I know I bring up all the problems within our own stuff here. Zero dollar G dropping the gifted blockchain Hello. membership. What's it? What a G! I got he got Big Daddy. There you go. Uh, there you go. Hell yeah! But I feel like it's just a. You know, a situation in South Korea, people might be the most active or heavily into crypto and like pro crypto, but then the government is not, you know what I mean? Because they want to retain that control. Um, and seeing the U.S. government. Isn't that funny, though? Doesn't it, that shock? It you? is kind of weird. Actually, it doesn't shock any of us. It's funny that the people speak. We vote by our actions. We think we vote at the, the voting. No, we vote and by. sometimes. We, we vote by how we spend our money. We vote the, from and, rooftops. You no, know, but in the actions oh. that were, the things that we're participating in. And somehow the governments, are, you know, when you see these numbers of people participating in a certain Sorry. ecosystem and the government's <laughs> like, oh, I don't know about that. It's like clearly the speak, the people have spoken because they clearly are interested in this. And we're seeing this today with the Bitcoin spot ETF. I'm not only excited the fact that we got these approved and launched the next day, yeah. which is already phenomenal, but they were having record setting capital flow within 30 minutes of it launching mm. shows an astronomical pent up interest that's been there that the government's been limiting. Yep, absolutely. I, uh, I'm here to see it. Now we're going to get into some of the random stuff, some of the macro stuff. We'll start with this. Uh, there is some worry about BitGet Global. Uh, looks like CEO and other C level um, people. I saw this. Yeah, have not been responsive. Kind of worried about them. Uh, you know, uh, this is unwell. So, you know, this is the danger of leaving your crypto on an exchange. You are in BitGet might to utilize heavy caution right now. Mm. I would definitely um, uh, caution against that. And, you know, this is, uh, all right. So this is highly speculative, small projects. But I think there's a few in here that I feel very, very good about. And I'm going to tell you which ones I feel the best about. This is from... Cyclop, no brain flip at no brain flip on X. I like Cyclop. Is he good? You know, I, yeah, I like a few of his posts, but I really liked his picks. You know, I was looking at the proof in the pudding. You know what I'm saying? But I do like picked. the names. Um, so we got this best part. Uh, we're talking about the beginning of the bull market, biggest bull market in history. Many top performers haven't been released yet. Many others have gained a thousand X to early birds. Last bull run like Solana and Matic. Here is 15 tokenless projects that might make your first million in this cycle. And I'm going to go through this list because uh, there's some of these that really excite me. So 
Layer Zero Labs, I think Layer Zero is, uh, I've seen this as kind of a sought after integration in a lot of new projects that are getting a lot of notoriety. So I am watching for Layer Zero Labs and uh, what I can do to be a part of the, air con uh, the ecosystem. The token and airdrop has been confirmed. Um, so, you know, it's a deep dive to get the token airdrop. You know, they don't have a token yet. This is all very, very new. Uh, to come projects. So there's a lot of room for growth here. Can I pause you there just yeah. for a moment? Because uh, this brings up a point I think everybody needs to be aware of. We're at a stage in the market right now with some of the projects that are uh, that have been out and trading for a few years that, for instance, uh, Cosmos Dot, uh, and, and I'm not saying uh, good or bad about this, but we just need to consider mm. that this this is a cycle for a lot of these projects to put up or shut up. Yeah. Right. I absolutely. think I think we're going to be seeing a large reshuffling of the top 100, especially the top 20 over the next year and a half, because some projects are going to come up, come out with their full utility of what they've been working on. Mm -hmm. And it's going to either be over impressive or under impressive uh, in, in that same note. There's been a roadmap that's been created and, and, and trouble that's happened along the way for some projects that something like Layer Zero uh, you know, could come out and see what those issues have been and created a protocol that does it better right. and actually comes out and, and sort of dethrones some of these. So this is why it's so important to diversify, but also always keep an open mind about new projects that are out there because there's going to be a lot of shuffling going on. It really is. A whole is. lot of shaking going on. It is, man. And you know that's why I feel good about talking about Layer Zero. I've seen a lot of up updates developments um a lot what of is layer use. zero people are asking in the chat like so it's trying to just interject interoperability across the board so this is trying to be not a layer one it's going to be it's trying to be that underlying communication route for a lot of different projects mm -hmm. to interact with each other um well, there you go yeah and like just for why i feel good about something like that is we're so early in the development of blockchain you have to build pathways of transaction before your ferrari layer one solana on steroids can transact <laughs> so, know, of course because you know. like you think about it as this world integrates into the blockchain people are going to be using logistic blockchains people are going to be using smart contract blockchains people are going to be using and maybe there's going to be something that comes in and does all these different all these different things in a very great way mm -hmm. but there's going to be some institutions that use a variety of different things and we're going to we're going to need these type of layer one solutions to tie all these things together be, uh, so that so that they can be effectively functional yeah. uh, and, and grow into this blockchain sector yeah and one more, I know we're running a little short. We got like five minutes. We started a little bit late, so I'll keep rolling for a minute. I'm excited to go working out though. Um, StarkNet is a decentralized ZK rollup layer two network over Ethereum. And uh, it's offering unlimited dApp scaling while maintaining its security of Ethereum through the Stark proofs. I have heard a lot of buzz, a lot of interest about this project as well. So these are the two, I know there's a slew of others that, you know, I'll be trying to take them piece by piece at a time because I could list off 20 of them that the community is good, the narrative is good, the use case is good, the future is good for it. Um, these are the two, you know, at the very end of the show, I'm, I'm just going to be kind of piecing in these extra, you know, they are very speculative. Okay, these are small market caps in comparison to Ethereum, right? But these are, you know, reasonable use case projects that I think have a good potential to really uh, have some insane moves over the, na the next uh, you know few years. We have a serious, serious uh, move in the markets coming for us here in, in Bitcoin at the least. Apparently, you know, we found we have some snack drinks still. Um, got that snake yeah. juice, baby. We got that snack juice. I, found I don't it know if you the, got the. I just found it on the floor yeah. coming down here. Um, we got a it, it's BJ's. They sent BJ a whole case of. Yeah, it was just. Wait, meant to like, be. Yeah. another tweet. He's get, we're getting more. Yeah, look, look the blockchain rev snick. tagged me and DZ, uh saying it's our lucky day. Snick OG at Fidgety Beast is working together with bullish con coin Ada on a second meme. With real world product bull jerky <laughs> is following snake bull energy jerky. and is coming to Cardano. This is so chaotic and beautiful. I love this. I hope this works. I'll try it. Uh, <laughs> we might, uh, I'll be keeping an eye out. Let me know. Um, you know, I'm this looking out. Wild. Um, I love beef jerky. You've never had bull jerky. I've had elk jerky. I've had gator jerky. I've had snack jerky. I've even had jerk chicken. You've had a jerk chicken is oh, delicious. So <laughs> jerk chicken is delicious. Jamaican food. Mm -hmm. You like the plantains? Yes. Those are so clutch. Mm, I want to go to yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. You know, I've been uh, to Barbados. It's pretty good. Hey, that's uh, is that can, Rihanna? 
Hey, uh, I, yes, I, yes, I, it is. I slipped, my girl. and this is mm-hmm. not a made-up story. Remember, I had an accident in 2003, broke 22 bones, blah blah blah, I was in casting crutches for mm-hmm. eight years. Just when I was shortly, about a week later, was supposed to be getting out of my casting crutches. Uh, I, I got, I got out of them. Everything was good. I went on a cruise, and uh, I was dancing at a resort, and I spilled some rum. And this is in Jamaica. Spilled some rum. I slipped on the rum, no. landed on my foot, rebroke my foot oh my from God. slipping on rum uh, at a resort in Jamaica. Uh, so, yeah, it was good time. Over. Oh my so God! So I got to go back and. Uh, oh my God! I, I you slipped on the rum on the ground, or from all the rum you drank? Uh, probably both. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dude, I was from Colorado at the time that I went to Barbados, yeah, and I was, you know, Colorado's a mile high, so it, a, a liter of Jack Daniels feels a lot different in the Colorado atmosphere than is it does. Is that why they do the point point three or whatever it is? <sighs> um, the point two, they, they, not point. They do the, you know, and you know when you get buy beer in Colorado, yeah. it's like much weaker than it is. It might be. I mean, yeah. it is. It's like two percent or something. So, like, no. if, if you don't know that, you'll go there. You're like, how did I have seventeen beers and I'm still? Well, there? I can go to Barbados. Weird. When I was in Colorado, I went to Barbados and had two, uh, two. You know, I mean, we're talking two of them, and I was fine. I played a show with these Rasta dudes that I met on the beach. <laughs> we were just jamming. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, we got to play, and I ended up playing a show in front of this whole like inclusive hotel thing. But I was hammered by the time I got there, so it went very poorly. I will say that it did not go well, but I made it through. Slept on the beach. Um, good times in Barbados. Mm-hmm. Um, other stuff going on in the the world here. This is why I always bring up the absolute uh, badassery of Sherpas. Uh, Gelgi Sherpa was taking a private client up Mount Everest when he noticed someone dying 500 meters from the summit. He ran over, wrapped him in a sleeping mattress, gave him oxygen, held the oxygen uh, bottle around his neck, on his, and then put the guy on his back and hiked him six That's hours crazy. down the mountain uh, to safety. Well, you know, a lot of times when people are dying on the mountain, they leave them. I know. There's many this, landmarks on the way up to the top that are dead bodies. Yes, dude. Really? This guy was a yeah. G. Like, just you can look it up. You can look up images of people mm-hmm. that like literally just froze to death. Dude, yes. I saw like, like two days ago a guy. I don't know if it was Switzerland or Sweden, but it's about the same. Mm. That's obviously much different. But uh, they he rode a bicycle to the Himalayas, hiked it with no guide, no oxygen, no nothing, what? all the way to the summit. Came back down and then rode the bike all the way back. No, it's like, bro, God. I'm over here having trouble getting upstairs without being out of breath. Holy that's wild. God. Um, Dang, guys. That's so sad. Oh, that we got is. a great fact here from Robert Kossin. Uh, says, What's Kelly, that? South Korea also has an enormously large number of South Koreans. That is interesting. That is truth. That is very true. Wow. Um, <laughs> Hannah, you ever climb an Everest? You think you're going to climb Everest sometime? Nar. I used Nar? to want to. What are you, now Australian I, I all of a sudden? Nar. 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 She told me Nar. that's how they say Nar. They do. It's they no in ours. Australian. Nar. 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 I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not hiking that thing. Your yeah. voice box is broken. Eat your uh, Indian food, guys. Turmeric is good for your uh, your blood, your heart. Uh, definitely recommend turmeric, especially now that we're in heart attack season after flu season and injection season so um turmeric good i'm sorry owen i'm not gonna get banned for that one it's a spice okay they don't care about it yet um here's what's going on in ecuador we have a purge happening in ecuador uh they did take over a news agency live on a on camera um you know come in took the host by by hostage at his hands in the air and they're uh, basically having a purge because of social unrest in ecuador right now so um you know about half of these folks will be in your local jurisdictions after being bused there by democrats about five years from now so look forward to that in your uh conquest of living in the city centers because it's going to get nasty over the next few decades in my opinion that's why i'm trying to get everyone the hell out um it's and actually, what's that like, so scary it's just like living in like, it is out your window and seeing that I that's sketch that's just like the movie perch it is <laughs> Uh, Bob from accounting, uh, you can, I'm going to, I'm going to post a link in the chat right now to show you the article that, uh, maybe it's fake, but, uh, it's, uh, apparently it looks like it's real. This what, what's re- it got? Re- regarding the Swede. The Swede. The, the guy that ran. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah, yeah, yeah. rode his bike all the way from. <laughs> we should cover that guy. He needs a coverage. Um, one more thing. Hertz is liquidating it. Uh, one third of its electric vehicle fleet. Due to lack of demand, we have a company planning to reinvest the money into internal combustion systems. So, you know, all this talk about 
reinventing and being all autonomous and uh, you know, the, the reason why I feel worry about automating everything and connecting everything via an electronic uh, vehicle grid, an electronic grid uh, for smart fridges, for smart mailboxes, for all of these different things that we want to interconnect is because if you honestly look at humanity from an AI perspective, we are locusts as a plague upon society. Who wants we, to rent an electric car? No one it's wants so to rent an inconvenient car. to charge the thing. No one wants to. You rent have to go out of your car. way. You got to sit there forever. No, I just want to pump my yeah. car up with some gas. Yeah, get on my way. I mean, you know, I'm just saying a cold blooded AI system. If it is yeah. sentient, it's looking at us like we're users. We're not givers uh, at large. So I've gotten in an Uber before, and it was a Tesla, and I was like, oh, like I like the skylight in here or whatever it's called, and he was like, yeah, it's a rental. I was like, why'd you rent a Tesla to drive Uber? What? You right? Uber I wonder if he like made a nice money. Tesla, but I'm like, a, like it's working. <laughs> you will own nothing and be happy. Oh my god! I yeah, a lot of the Uber blacks, like in Miami and stuff, the people that are driving them, they don't even own those cars. No they're like, way. they're making payments on it through Uber, and they're never gonna make all the payments. Oh my god! It's like a that's just, ins- that's pure very, very It's crazy, that man. Because it was in Atlanta, I was like, I just didn't understand how that the finances work out. That's in a that rat. Situation, That's yeah. like the gerbil wheel. You just get yeah. stuck in a gerbil wheel and you just, you know, you never get to leave. You just go That's run around, wild, run bro. around. Um, what's that? High school. High school in New York kicked all the kids out. Oh, I saw that. Wait, why did they I kick saw them out? That. They're kicking the kids out of a high school in New York to make way for immigrants. Oh my God. <laughs> what? That's where our so world is. So, are they just going. like done for the year? Are they going online? Listen, kids, you don't need that. Just go home and wear your masks, and we're going to have school over Zoom. Um, leave your chair there for the Chinese national military aged males that are making their way in New York by droves for the conquest of a lifetime. We are entering the third world championship. So beyond us making buku <laughs> bucks in crypto, get prepared, buy some land, get all your shit together because Bitcoin. it's getting real. Bitcoin! Yeah, I love that guy. Uh, you, you're talking about the guy with the weird haircut and he's like just screaming out yeah, by the side I, of the road? Yeah, I, I had him as a guest on my show today. No! No, I didn't. I just, there was a tweet there that, that, that <laughs> TJ did today and I, I basically pulled him up next to me at the start of the show. And, oh uh, my God. Uh, they're going online. Yeah, that is such garbage that is such garbage robbing countless kids of their educational experience uh for political incentives absolutely disgusting the people that put this in place you disgust me i will never accept you as my countrymen and may the chains lay lightly upon your weak shoulders um but until tomorrow i hope that you all are just having a good time in crypto if you're here just now uh, you're watching the show, smash the like button, share it out to the world, let them know where we are. This is where all the crypto alphas dropped. And uh, shout out to Aaron yeah. right here for putting together this new yes. set. Great yes. job. He does Aaron. a lot of stuff here at Hit Network. Couldn't do it without him. Thank yeah, you, let's go. Came down, he was smashing it. <laughs> but so I know excited. nothing about electric cars. Hey, yeah. hey, Ron. We're going to go work out. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Boom. Peace. Thank you.